So in this video, I will be giving you 20 different hacks on how you can speed up and just be more efficient inside of Lightroom. Just hang around, see if there are some of them that you don't know about and that you might implement in your own workflow. So let's get started with the first one. And that is that you can change the background color inside of Lightroom. So all you have to do is to right click on this gray part here. And here you can see that you can change between all of these different colors. So if you want to have it on a white background, gray, or even a totally blacked out version. And this is great if you just want to see how your photo is going to look on different sort of backgrounds. Number two, you can also change the color of your masks. So masking is one of those tools that I use a lot inside of Lightroom. And let's say we create a mask. Let's just do a linear gradient like this. As you can see, the standard setting inside of Lightroom is that it's going to create a red um, selection where the mask is going to be applied. But let's say you are photographing something red, then you would like to have this be in a different color. And to change that, all you have to do is go up to this little symbol here. And if you press this, you can see that it is set to color overlay. And at the bottom, it says color overlay settings. So if you just press that, you can change the color of that overlay. And the third hack is just a keyboard shortcut. And that is if, if you press the V button on your keyboard, you're going to be able to toggle between black and white and color. So I use this quite a lot when I'm editing. So just pressing V on your keyboard toggles between black and white and color. And next one is one that I'm using every time I'm editing and that is that I'm sorting my images. And you can do this in quite a few different ways, but the one I like using is to use the numbers on my keyboard and I'm using the numbers between one and five. And if I press one of these, you will see that I'm setting a rating to that image. One, just giving it one star all the way up to three, four, five and five being the maximum. And what you then can do is that you can go down to filters and you can filter it to rated. And if you press that, only the images that have been rated will show down here in this bottom part. And you can also decide how many stars the images need to have to show down in that part. But you can also sort them uh, by giving them a color. So if you instead use the number keys between six and nine, you will assign a color to that specific image. So for example, if I press number six on my keyboard, you will see that this label has been set to red, which is red in Swedish. And seven, you will give it a yellow color, eight, a green, and nine will give it a blue. So this is also a way to just sort your images. And the next hack is that if you hold down Alt or Option on Mac when you are sliding the sliders, you are going to be able to see when you are starting to clip the image. So for example, if I grab the exposure here and hold down option here on my Mac, while I'm sliding the slider and increasing the exposure, you will see that as I'm sliding, some colors appear on the screen. And these colors that appear are when I'm starting to clip the image. But if I don't want to hold down the option, I can also press the J key on my keyboard. And when I did that, you can see that this blue color appeared here on the what do you call it? The steering of the bike. And this is because the blue color represents when I'm clipping the black parts of the image. So if I increase the exposure once again, you will see that the blue color disappears, but up here in the bright parts, the red color appears instead. So this is just a way of uh, showing if you're clipping the image and by pressing J, you will see both the highlights and the blacks keep being clipped. All right, I know I'm moving forwards quite quickly, but that is because we have 15 more hacks to cover. But if you feel like it's just going too fast, don't worry, you can always go back and watch that specific part once again. All right, and now for hack number six. Sometimes when you shoot an image, you might shoot it at like 45 degree angle, and then the camera might have a struggling to realize if it's going to be a portrait or a landscape photo. And with this photo here, for example, this happened. The camera interpreted this photo as a vertical photo, but I wanted it to be horizontal. So you can actually rotate your photos inside of Lightroom. So what you can do is just that you can right click your image, go down to transform, and you can rotate your image to left or to the right. And if you press one of those, it is just going to rotate it 90 degrees. And this is how I intended this image to look. And for the next one is that you can copy the settings that you just did on an image to the next one. So let's say I have this image here, I have edited it and I like it, and then I go to the next one and I wanna apply the exact same settings 
as I had on the previous one. All I have to do is just press this previous button here and it's going to get applied with the same settings as on the previous photo. And this function works, so it's not just the previous photo, but it is the last photo you were looking at. So if I uh, wanted this image here, or I wanted the settings from this image here to be applied on this photo, all I have to do is press on it once, then go back to the image I wanna paste it to and press previous, and it's going to apply the settings from the previous photo I previewed. And if you're anything like me, you want your workspace to be clean and you wanna find the stuff that you're looking for. And sometimes I find it kind of annoying just scrolling through here, looking for the different tabs I'm work looking for. So what you can do is if you right click up here, you see that you can choose collapse all. And if you do that, it is going to collapse all of the different menus to get them in this closed down version which I think is really nice because now I can see all of the different tabs and I can open the one that I'm actually looking for and it's just a little bit more neat. And at the same time you can also right click and choose expand all. This is just going to open them all up uh, if, it would, if you would want that as well. The next hack is one that I use a lot and it is that you can create virtual copies of your images. So just by right clicking this little thumbnail down here you can go up to create virtual copy. This will create a copy of your image that you now can do a separate edit on. So let's say for the first one, I wanted to give it this edit, but on the second one, maybe I wanted it to have more of a teal and orange edit and I wanna try that. Then I can do that, but I can still have my first version there so I don't have to delete the edit. All right, then the next one might not be the most useful one, but it is quite fun. So what you can do is that you can go up here to your identity plate and if you just right click it, you can see here that you have some different settings and you can actually edit your identity plate. So what you can do is that you can change it from Adobe Idea to personalized. And here you can do a custom, you can change the name, uh, you can change the font of it, so you can change the settings of the font, uh, the size of it. But if you wanted, you could even upload a logo or something like that. You just has, have to press this use graphical identity plate instead. And you can locate your file on your computer and upload a logo. So this is just a fun little way to personalize your Adobe Lightroom. I think it's quite neat. Alright, and that marks the halfway point in this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. And let's continue with the next one. And the next little hack is that if you go to your sliders here, and let's say you wanna change the exposure, what you can do is that instead of just dragging the slider around, you could press this exposure uh, name here or the slider, press that once. And you see that on the screen, it says that you can modify uh, the slider by pressing plus or minus on your keyboard. So let's say you want to increase the exposure, you can just press the plus button on your keyboard. This will increase your exposure in increments of 10. Or if you want to decrease it, you can just press the minus sign on your keyboard. And it's the same with the different uh, sliders. You can press the highlights and press the plus key. This is going to increase the highlights by increments of five. For hack number 12, you can just press L on your keyboard. This is going to isolate your image on the screen, which is really nice if you are just wanting to take a clear look of your image. And if you press it once again, it's going to black out the surrounding. So once again, press it once to sort of fade out the background, press it once again to black it out. And the next hack is just continuing on that. And that is if you press F instead of L, you are going to show the image in full screen mode. So it's going to expand the image and show it on the whole screen. And that is F on the keyboard. And while on the topic of keyboard shortcuts, if you press Y on your keyboard, you will get a before and after side by side comparison, which is really nice. But let's say you have two images and you wanna compare them or show them side by side. So to do that, just select two images down here uh, in your thumbnails and then hold down shift and press C on your keyboard. This will give you a full screen, sort of full screen uh, comparison 
uh, of the two images that you selected. Just a neat little way to compare two images you are editing. All right, but as I'm thinking about it, you can also compare even more images. So let's say you uh, want to compare multiple images, then just select the ones that you want to compare or show together. And once you have selected ones you want to show, press N on your keyboard and they will show up in this sort of gallery view where you can see them together. Which I think is great if you are working on sort of a set of images that are supposed to be viewed together or if they are going to get printed and so on. And you can still change the color of the background. So uh, right click to see what it would look like with a white background or with a black background. But a neat little way to show multiple images at once. All right, and the next one is one that I think is really cool because sometimes, you know, you go out photograph and you come home and you realize that your camera has these dust spots on your sensor, which is really unfortunate, but that just happens sometimes. It's really hard to find them because they can really be um, disguised in the image. So with this one, for example, there is one here, here, but they can be really hard to find sometimes. So what you can do, if you choose this spot removal tool here, tick this little box down here that says visualize spots. And if you press that, you can see that it is easier to see where these sort of dust spots are on the screen. So they sort of get highlighted. So just a great little way to find those dust spots that you don't really want there because it's just so annoying finding them like a week later. All right, before I told you about how if you hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard while you're sliding the sliders, you will see when you're starting to clip the highlights of the image. Well, if you hold down Alt or Option while you are sliding the masking slider here under sharpening, you will see how it sort of creates this outline and what you are seeing here, the white part is the part that is going to get affected by the sharpening effect. So if I leave it at the bottom, you see the whole screen is white and this is because the whole screen is going to get sharpened or the whole image is going to get sharpened. But as I'm dragging this up, you can see that now only the uh, ground and the buildings are the ones that are white or the edges of the building even. So these are the parts that is going to get sharpened and everything that is black is not going to get affected by the sharpening effect. And now for the second to last hack and that is if you go up here to the crop inside of here you have this rule of thirds which is the standard overlay you get when you're cropping an image but if you press O while you are in here you will see that you can filter or toggle between different kinds of overlays for cropping. All right, and now for the final hack of the video, and that is that you can save your edits as presets if you wanna use them on another image. And I know most of you probably already know this. So to save them, all you have to do is go over to the presets tab and press this plus sign over here. And when you do, you can see it says create presets, just press that. And now you can name it. So you can name it something like uh, black and white hot. And on the group, you can choose which group you wanna put it in. And if you don't change it, it's going to end up in user presets, which is fine. And underneath here, you can check the boxes for the settings that you want to get applied inside of the preset or what that you want to get saved in the preset. And if you want them all, just go down here and press the check all button. And when you're done, you can just press the blue create button. Now your preset is saved and it's going to be available under user preset. Now you can just go to any image inside of your Lightroom catalog and you will be able to apply this preset to that specific image. So there you have it. Those are 20 hacks inside of Lightroom. I hope you learned something and that is going that it is going to help you speed up your workflow. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.